Hi, I'm Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity, and it's September 3rd, 2014. I've got a really important update for you. We're going to talk about Russia, Ukraine, and the West here for a minute. Now, this really is a very important piece of news that's going on right now. In fact, the whole dynamic of what's going on between Russia and the West is so important that we really ought to be sure that we have our facts absolutely correct on this. Now, the first piece of news is that we still have exactly no information, new information on MH17. Now remember, all we're waiting on here are the air traffic control recordings from that shoot down, which led to nearly 300 people being lost and losing their lives. We don't have the air traffic control recordings. And the other thing we don't have at this point is uh, any readouts from the black boxes that were recovered. Now this could provide important information. In particular, we wanna see if the communications that happened uh, have anything to shed any light on this because there's been reports of potentially there were other military planes in the region. Uh, we would like to know if the plane was diverted in a certain direction, things like that. I don't think that the black boxes or the air traffic control recordings will tell us anything about who shot the missile down. But what's very interesting is that uh, the apparently the Netherlands and a number of other countries have gotten together and have decided that they can, if they decide to, hold this, the results of their investigation into the crash of MH17 confidential away from the public. Now, there's only a couple possibilities here. One, the missile that took the plane down was shot by the separatists. Two, the missile that took the plane down was shot by Ukrainians, uh, not the separatists in this story. So I can only imagine which of those two stories it would be in the interest of the West to withhold the information from, and that would be if Ukraine somehow shot that plane down, either on purpose or by accident. So it's just mysterious that we're not getting any data there, any more evidence, and that the Western press has completely forgotten about MH17. Ask yourself, in the last week or two, how many articles have you read about it? Has it been dominating the news cycle? Remember when we had the other Malaysian plane uh, 370 that got lost, uh, that was just 24-7 coverage and the tiniest shred of evidence was being handled and parsed through. Here we had an equivalent loss of life, maybe even higher, I think, in this case, and uh, the Western press has almost completely dropped it as anything worth talking about. Very interesting. And so I'm going to talk about the Western press for a second. Um, here's a headline thing that came out in the Washington Post. I've got a printout here. It's from the Washington Post, and it says, Russia invades Obama expresses concern. So here's this word invades. That's pretty serious. This is from August 28th. And in this article, it talks about two Russian armored columns coming into Ukraine and helping the separatists take over a, a port town in the southeastern part of the country. Now, here's the thing. An armored column is a very big thing. It's huge. It might include tanks, armored personnel carriers, of course, you need refueling trucks to handle uh, the logistics for this. You probably have an army field tent of some kind with uh, medical care in it. You've probably got food and rations following along. In short, there's the armored personnel column, and then there's all the logistics that go along with that. That's a very big thing. Should be very easy to spot uh, by reporters who are on the ground, if you want to have reporters there, or by satellite. Either way, both would be good. And then we go further, and the... That was August 28th, but in the last uh, four or five days now, the, we've started to see this word show up, which is Russian incursion continues in the Ukraine. Now, that's a headline from NPR. When you say an incursion continues, you've established a fact and saying you're getting more of that fact at this point in time. Russian incursion in Ukraine likely underway, U.S. says, ABC News. On and on and on. The Guardian, we've got uh, Reuters, we've got uh, Financial Times. All the major Western uh, press outlets are saying that Russia has uh, undergone or Ukraine's experienced an incursion of Russians. So how many satellite photographs have been released by the West, by the United States, by NATO that show this incursion? Here, I've printed that number out for you. That's right, zero. We've seen zero satellite photos. This should be the easiest thing in the world to show by satellite photo. Easy. Established fact. Now, whether you're ABC or NBC or NPR or Reuters or any of these, these uh, players in the mainstream media, you could have reporters on the ground there. Don't tell me that war zone is too hot. It's not too hot. Jeez, they got reporters in Syria, for crying out loud. Uh, that's a much, much more deadly and, and serious place to be operating. And, uh, and so they don't have reporters there for some reason. And second of all... Back in March of 2011, 
the Fukushima disaster is unfolding. We were desperate at Peak Prosperity for some real solid information. So we commissioned Digital Globe on the next Passover to take some photos for us at a very high resolution of the Fukushima plants. And we got some nice pictures, did some nice analysis on it, cost us 350 bucks. Now, we're not Reuters, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, uh, NPR. We're, we're not those organizations. These people can easily afford to get their own satellite photos. But if they were actually doing their jobs, they would be demanding that the United States or NATO or both release the evidence that they've got. They would not just say, oh, U.S. says there's an incursion going on. Really, where's the data? Now, here's the thing. Picks or it didn't happen. There is no incursion going on. You know how I know? Because we're not seeing satellite images from it. If there was an incursion, there would be a flyover, probably hourly, from some satellite belonging to the West, and we'd be seeing the pictures, and you'd have little colored arrows and circles and dots, and they'd be on easels and big blow-ups of them, and they'd be, all be talking about them. This is very concerning to me that we live now in a country, in a system, where you can print things over and over and over again. There are now hundreds of articles talking about the Russian incursion as an established fact. Not one shred of on-the-ground or satellite evidence has been uh, put along with that. So, a little concerning there. I'm of the vein that says that if there are no pictures, it's because there aren't any pictures. So, uh, I really think that this just tells us more about the idea that there is a very concerted push to box, isolate Russia, and to get them to back down. But here's my prediction. They're not going to back down at this point. Crimea, done deal. Belongs to Russia at this point in time. The eastern provinces, uh, both those two regions, uh, Lugansk and, and uh, Donetsk, those regions, those are, um, uh, those are probably a done deal at this point in time. Now, here's where it gets fun. If Ukraine as a proper state loses those eastern regions, that's where all the coal comes from and that's where most of the heavy industry is. The IMF loan that was made to the tune of 17 and a half billion with another billion and a half kicker, bringing us to 19 billion that was made, uh, went to Western, the Kiev portion, the Western Ukrainians. I don't know how they're gonna pay that back without the eastern regions. So they've got a real pickle on their hands and there's now real money on the line and it looks like uh, uh, NATO countries and Europe in general is probably on the hook for supporting Western Ukraine. Because listen, we go to the West goaded Ukraine into uh, all of these actions. And uh, unless we want to go all uh, kind of uh, Libyan on them and just stir things up and then walk away, which is a possibility, we're now going to find uh, that Kiev is going to be placing some demands for additional resources. And uh, we'll see how this all plays out. So this is all happening, and it's against a global backdrop of very interesting and somewhat deteriorating global economic uh, data at this point in time. We've got Europe probably in recession in general across the whole uh, suite there, but you know it's still close to stall speed. We've got a really nice two-part report at the site right now written by Brian Preddy where he goes through and looks at the good, the bad, the ugly of the economic data as we have it right now, and really talking about this one idea, which is that uh, demand is just not there, and for good reason, right? Uh, we have demographic reasons, why, like Japan or in the United States where you have an aging population that is not in the accumulate stuff phase of their lives, which creates lots of demand. They are actually in the diminish the amount of stuff in their lives phase. You've got corporations that have learned how to grow uh, their top lines and bottom lines by being lean and mean, but I think you've also got younger people who've also figured out how to skinny down, go lean and mean, and, and, have, and like it like living a life without huge amounts of trappings compared to what their parents had. So uh, we think that there's uh, both, there's all three things. There's good, there's a little bad, there's some ugly, but really we have to keep our eyes on what's happening on the bad and the ugly side at this point in time, because uh, the world economy, let's face it, is going nowhere at this point in time, probably for two simple reasons. You got too much debt on one hand and you've got oil over $100 a barrel. Those two things come together and you're not gonna have growth the whole structure of equities and everything with respect to the bond markets, both of those things, the government is very much hoping are going to continue to grow and expand and assets will continue to inflate, but those require that global demand comes back. And so if you want to find out where we are with respect to global demand, come to the website, check out that two-part report. And of course, we are going to continue in our mythical search for data that can support uh, what we're reading in the daily news, because it's not just what you say, it's the evidence you have. All right, with that, I'm Chris Martinson. Thank you for your attention.